so this was in the context they started talking about redfall mentioning it blah 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 if you don't know um what this is basically uh jeff grubb this fellow right here is a well-known insider in the industry he's got a lot of contacts in the gaming space i mean he's he's got a lot of credibility he's not just making stuff up basically and they're talking right now about redfall and the stuff that went on ongoing theory is that this game started before Microsoft took over, and when Microsoft saw it, they didn't believe in it, and so they never supported it. Then just cancel it. Just fucking well, cancel it. What are you doing? Right. You have the power to, uh, to, to make that move. If you're not gonna give one of your first party games the support it needs, then just cancel it. This is worse than no game at all, in my opinion. I would I would agree. The interesting thing is that one of the, the things that's been going around online is that apparently Arcane started on Redfall roughly, I think it was 2017, 18, somewhere in there. And so it was already in development when Microsoft took them over. Zenimax merger closed March 9th of 2021. So Redfall was already pretty far along. And I think Redfall June 13th of 2021. So if the deal closed in March of 21 and then they announced it in June of 21, that's interesting. Cause basically what what's being theorized here is that, or suggested or speculated upon here is that Microsoft never believed in Redfall. They saw this and were just like, eh, this is, this sucks guys. <laughs> this, this sucks. And instead of canceling it, they were like, let's just keep it as an exclusive in case maybe it turns out good. And they decided to just toss it out and I, I hope that it turns into something. But apparently they never got the, the support that they were really hoping for. They never got um, what they really, really needed, which is interesting. I don't know if that's confirmed. I don't know if that's true. Who can say? The, the, like, okay, I don't hate this game. I just, it is, it is a bad game. It's okay. I hate it for you. Bad game though. It is a bad game. It is weirdly bad. And it's like, what, what, are, what are people who are paying $15 a month for Game Pass Ultimate supposed to think about this as one of your first big offerings in a very long time? Uh, I would, I'd begin losing faith. I would. And that's where I'm at. Like you guys know me. I don't love bashing Xbox. I don't love bashing PlayStation. I would love to have more games that are good that I enjoy, which apparently is a surprising thing to say. People are like, what, you want games to be good? Yeah, because I'm a gamer and I want to play games that I like. Shocker. But I, like I said, have had to try over two days to install Redfall. It's so busted. The, the Xbox launcher is such a joke that it's taken two days just to get this damn thing installed when it should be boop click game pass oh i want to play redfall click and then install but what would happen is you'd hit install you'd go to the queue it would go and it would just say preparing or it would say processing or it would say prepare whatever it was i don't know and it would just never ever launch it would never start downloading and then you'd have to clear it, delete the download, try again. So it, I was not streaming while trying to download this. So like, look, you see it's now it says installed Redfall just installed. I hit play. Watch what happens when I hit play. This is like two days ago. Okay. Checking for updates. I'm like, okay, I'm just going to play it. We're going to do the video needs an update. I, I was so confused. And what proceeds to happen is it sits here for a while. I record for another like 20 minutes and it just doesn't do anything. And then I, I'm like, okay, something weird is going on. So I stop the recording and I start looking around at it and it, <laughs> and I'm not joking. It uninstalled itself. The game was downloaded. It downloaded just under a hundred gigs and then it uninstalled itself while trying to update with the first launch. I've never in my life seen that happen with a game. Like 
never in my life. So who knows? Maybe we're going to hit play. I haven't dared to hit play um, <laughs> again, but I swear to God, I mean, if it happens live again, it's going to be really, really freaking funny. But uh, it's it's so laughably horrible that you can't even launch the game. Like the PC doesn't want to run this thing. Everything that launches in Unreal Engine has been just a disaster. See the weird flickering? You gotta love the weird flickering. And all the texture pop in. What Let's groovy get out sound. There and face them. Yeah. Down with the patriarchy. Oh my god, you guys know how I feel about Fade the Blacks. Oh my god. It's like every little thing in this game is trying to torture me too. Weird. I don't know what this is. I hate to be that guy. This is not how shadows work. Oh, wait. Um... There we go. Oh. Uh, it's frozen. Apparently hitting Alt R was too much. Well, uh, apparently pulling up the, the NVIDIA overlay was too much for it to handle. This reminds me of cyberpunk. Um, let's see. It's super fun and I'm addicted and everyone hates it. I mean, I think this is one of those seven out of 10 games. I think you can have fun with it. Um, but it's not going to win any awards. It's not going to do anything like that. The biggest problem is that it's just a broken pile of garbage. Like those reflections look good. The textures, once they load in, are, are good. Um, but it's just, it, I mean, it's not going to be groundbreaking or really blow anyone away. Okay, let's try this again. But like you can see moments where it's working, we're getting 240 FPS. That's awesome. Way better than Jedi Survivor. Jedi Survivor can't even break 60 or 70 on a 4090, which is what this PC is. So like when it's working, it's working pretty well. I still would say it doesn't look very good. There's And there's like a lot of pop in and stuff. And that's what a lot of people are complaining about. Um, but the biggest thing is going to be like frame drop. So if I pin this here, watch the uh, the frame graph. This should be steady. Like the, the graph should be flat, but you're seeing it bounce all over the place, which a little variation's fine. That's why we have variable refresh rate monitors. That's okay. However, it should not be going from like, we just had 240 down to 120. If I turn around this way, it goes back up to 200. I turn around, look at the gas and it drops down to 120, <laughs> you know, it's a little rough. It's a little rough. Are you a IGN seven out of 10 to be clear? Seven out of 10 after many, many patches. Some people could enjoy this, I think. It's not my kind of game, but I don't like four player co-op looter shooters. They're just not my typical kind of game. Um, but dude, look at that graph. Look at all these bizarre drops.
What if I walk backwards towards the gas? Okay, so like right here, looking at this gas, we're at like 150. What if I look this way? 135. Okay, what if I walk backwards? I was hoping you'd have like that CS go or CS2 smoke deformation, but it doesn't. Um, this game is a game. <laughs> like the, the map is interesting. I'll give them that. Like, it seems like they've done some decent designing on the city, but there's just not much here. Like, it's just so empty. The hollow man is watching and life for safety. One life for safety. There's a vampire. A vampire is over there. Sup, dude. Dude, oh, it's so choppy. Am I still on the harder difficulty? Yeah, I'm on the hardest get difficulty. And you saw how easy that was? <laughs> I'm on the hardest difficulty. Okay, let's see if it gets any harder in here. Let's see if I can, like, if I can force myself to lose. Oh, this is where Abby and Ellie had their fight. Dude, the sound is doing something weird, though. I don't know if that's intentional or not. Is there really nothing in here? go up the ladder over there but hello vampire mr. vampire what does this game run like natively Not the worst I've ever seen. I don't think there's any alien anti-aliasing turn on. Uh, embarked on the Yakuza Like a Dragon series yet? I have not. I know I've been saying this forever. I haven't installed. Oh, it turned itself back on. Did I not hit? Okay, I don't know what's happening. Let's go performance. Oh, but this looks significantly worse. Hopefully being able to stream in 4K, you can see just how grainy this becomes. Like, look at that. What was that?
like I'm trying to find things to fight and do, but there's just nothing. Like, what am I to do? Just like track and field. What am I to do? Okay, there's something. He's down. This is a whole lot of useless. Oh, there's a drop. Ooh, I didn't realize they were also shooting at me. Okay, I died once. They got they got me. They did it. <laughs> they did it. This makes Deathloop look like a 10 out of 10. At least Deathloop was like kind of coherent. This I like this game though. My issue, biggest issue with it is just that the idea itself isn't that interesting. Like I'm just not that into the idea to begin with. Like if you had told me what this was supposed to be years ago, um, and like you were asking me to invest in it, I wouldn't. Like, I've always wondered, I think there was a program or a system for this back in the day. I don't remember what it was called. It was like FIG, I think is what it was called. But it was basically like a crowdsourced investor platform for certain things. So you could, like, if we wanted to make a video game, like say I wanted to make a, a video game. And I was like, okay, guys, I need investments to be able to hire people and to get the studio going. Um but I don't have the money. If you pitch in like a hundred bucks, How do I get this dust out of my bones? um, that was so funny. Uh, if you <laughs> gave me like a hundred bucks, you'd own a hundred bucks worth of the project. And then if that's say 1%, I mean, it would be a lot less than that, but like, let's say that's 1% of the, the total investments of the game, then if the game breaks even, you would, in theory, get your hundred bucks back. And then if it makes a profit, you would get a profit commensurate with what you put in. So it's kind of like a crowdfunded investment platform. That's at least what I remember Fig being back when they announced it back in the day. And I've always wondered, like, if they did that with some of these big, big games, it would be really interesting to see, like, YouTubers and streamers, especially people like, like me, who claim to be able to figure out what's going to make a good game and what won't. Um, it'd be really interesting to see who gets the best picks and who thinks like, yeah, I'm going to put a thousand bucks on this game. Cause I think there's reason to believe that uh, it takes two is going to be successful. So I'm going to put my money where my mouth is. And then they put their money up for it. Right. Um, or with this, I don't think this is going to be good. So I'm going to, to not invest or I'll even short the game. I think that'd be super interesting. Is there like, I know there might be gambling stuff like that. Are there like gambling sites that do that where you, you bet on how, like, I think this, this game gets above an 80. Like there's so many gambling websites nowadays. I would imagine there's something like that. Like a, uh, a place where you put kind of like betting odds you bet that it's above us in like an 80 metacritic or below 80 there's got to be something like that because at that point i don't think that's just speculation like regular gambling um for like cards or slots like that's at least sort of speculative investing you know could be interesting um man cyberpunk could have been great but it was shoved out the door before its time and 
can never be fixed. Yeah, I mean, it's just... It is a little... Not a little. It's a lot sad. Oh, hey, dude. Okay, let's test the AI. Can I go in this mansion and just see what we're dealing with? Or can I not go in here? All the doors are locked. I can't stand when games do this. They just put kayaks and stuff in front of the door as if that's just, oh, can't go in there, I guess. There's a 20 pound plastic thing in front of the door. Can I go in here? No. Like, I just want to go fight stuff, but I'm struggling finding it. I guess I could go back to where those guys were that, that killed me. What have you here? I It's just so mindless. Like I'm going around trying to find things to fight and I I'm like actively struggling to find to find vampires. And when you do find them, it's like a few shotgun shells and they're dead. And like this is starter equipment. This is like the starter guns and stuff. I can't imagine what it gets like later in the game. 200 bucks on Tears of the Kingdom being amazing. Any takers? Define amazing. Like, are we saying above a 97 Metacritic? That's interesting. Or are you saying, like, above a 90? Because I think above a 90, your odds are going to mean, like, you know, it's a thousand to one. Gun feels pretty solid. I've uh, like I am unstoppable. <laughs> they didn't put the baby pool above the the grass, so it's clipping in. Bear in mind this is all on epic settings. Um <laughs> Alex <laughs> Zelda will be 60 on metacritic. Uh that one I I do think you'll have some takers on that bet, Alex. I I think you'll find some people willing to take you up on that. Um <laughs> 2000 Armored Core 6 will win Game of the Year. For this year? I don't know about that, dude. Maybe. I still... Like I said, I still think Armored Core is probably pretty niche. In my humble opinion. Uh, I think it's more niche than Tears of the Kingdom. So I'd be surprised if it doesn't... If Tears of the Kingdom doesn't beat it. Maybe it does. But I don't know. I, I would I would say it's more likely that Tears of the Kingdom wins game of the year than Armored Core. Armored Core has a chance for sure. Starfield, I would be putting well below. But yeah, Tears of the Kingdom is going to be a hard one to beat.
5,000, at least half a million Elden Ring players refund Armor Core on Steam after an hour and a half. <laughs> I actually, I'm, I'm actually pretty interested in how that plays out. Because for those of you not familiar yet, I know we talked about this the other day, but I, I think it is important to mention. Armored Core is not like Soulsborne games. It's not like Dark Souls. It's not like Elden Ring. They will play different. And the devs are trying to be very clear. The publishers are being clear. They're different games, right? It's not the same. And they're trying to make that clear because I think you're right. Some people are going to buy Armored Core expecting it to be Elden Ring with robots. And they're going to be very disappointed. So I actually... Like, even with all the efforts from the marketing campaign, I agree there's going to be a lot of people that are going to buy it and you're going to be very surprised when it doesn't play that way. Brandon Reyes super chatted $19.99. Jeez, thank you, dude. Starfield has to drop and be a hit or there isn't really a way to justify owning an Xbox besides being the cheapest option for next-gen gaming. Even then, you have no titles to try on it. PC and PS5 combo becoming best choice. I... For one, thank you for the nineteen ninety nine. That's very generous. Thank you. Um, and I do think, Brandon, that you're right. I, I think that they've got, like, they just have got to start figuring this out. If it's true, like Jeff Grubb was saying in the podcast, that this is um, a game that Xbox execs saw and they knew this was never going to be good, then that could be the, the case that they just decided... Like, just get it out there. It's going to suck. It's going to do badly. Maybe some people will like it, but I'm sure they weren't expecting it to be this poorly received. Um, cause I'm sure they thought that it was going to be a little, like a little polished or a little refined, but they've got to get a banger. Like again, we're almost three years into this console generation and it feels like there's been really no bangers from Microsoft at all. Like, what is... Uh, uh, Hi-Fi Rush, yeah. But I would also say Hi-Fi Rush is a lot more niche than than this is. I still haven't seen anything that makes me want a PS5. Good to see you. If you don't like third-person adventure games, then yeah, you're not going to... How can we trust these people, huh? You're not going to like it. Helping folks out there. It is fighting back a little. You know what happened at the shelter. You think that can't happen here? We got to trust somebody. Equip Joe. salvage. Can't be us the town. It already is. Look, I don't want to leave. You think I'm fit to move again out there? And there's a doctor here. This is the best chance we have. If something goes wrong, I told you so, Anna. Bye, Look how short he is. You, so. no, you kind of remind me of myself at your age. I, uh... Can I just you? refresh... Ammo? Is that not a thing? Wait, where was the ammo? I could have sworn there was a place to get ammo. Am I just imagining that? Was it like over here? Lost and found lockpick, rewire kit. Am I just imagining that? I'd be interesting to see how many console commands are accessible through config file changes, though I only know UE3 commands. Oh, that could be interesting. All the random notes everywhere. How do you go from Dishonored 1 to Death of the Outsider and Prey, the make death loop, which wasn't bad, but mid, and then this thing? Um, an interesting thing, for one, thank you for the five, before I forget. Thank you for the five. Um, an interesting thing is that it's been described that there's a real, like, departure in their, um, like, their attempted style. It's like when a... a a vlogger tries to make documentaries or when a a like country musician tries to get into rap it's like maybe it goes well and we're like oh my god why like why did they ever do anything other than this this is so great 
but it probably will suck. <laughs> probably will suck. And with this, it just seems like there's been two games now where Arcane has tried to get into multiplayer shooters because I would assume maybe executives at the studio like those games themselves, really enjoy playing them and just decided, hey, we can do this and decided to try it and are now kind of surprised that they're not being received well because it's such a consistent thing. Like just time and time again, they're, they're just trying this thing that is not going well and then they act surprised when it doesn't go well. Man, mad popping. Like, I don't, you don't have to be a rocket scientist to figure out that this graph is not the, the steady flat graph that it should be. It's all over the place, man. Interesting. Look at PC gaming wiki. It says Portuguese support was advertised, but it's not available. Really? Hasn't that been a thing with a handful of games? Specifically Portuguese support. Wasn't that a thing with like Forspoken or I remember there was a game getting like mass downvoted and I looked it up on Metacritic and all of the reviews were just like spamming add Portuguese to the game. Add it, add it, add it. Or something like that. Was it return? I don't know. Um But yeah, it just seems like this is a game that the studio has wanted to make or somebody in the studio has wanted to make oh, daytime. Sorta. even though nobody really likes the idea like none of their fans are into it it would be like if i went from making gaming content and then i started exclusively making like makeup tutorials you'd be like what what like dude i'm glad that you like doing this but like, this isn't why we subbed. This isn't what we wanted. Like, what is this? I live for bad punch animations. <laughs> Still alive. Wild. I love it. Seriously, though, I need ammo. I guess I haven't really been looting bodies, so that's probably most of it. I swear there's so many freaking notes. Um, hey, at least it has ultra wide support. Sort of. When you pull up the menu, you see it cuts them off, the top of their head off, and the UI slides to the left. So it it does, but not really. <laughs> it's like a little screwed up. Just a little. Phil Spencer is probably loving this game. It's sad that Xbox is going downhill, and personally think Starfield will be a huge letdown. Well, Ginger Beast, I think. Here's okay. Here's my official prediction. Everybody can mark this. Wow. You guys are so active. Um, this is my, my prediction Starfield releases. I think it gets a mix of like eight and nines, a few tens, probably averages like high eighties on Metacritic. Okay. But Twitter and YouTube and TikTok will be an actual disaster with people sending out clips of bugs and glitches and weird animation hitching, like all sorts of stuff. And the story will quickly become on social media that the game is like a, an utter disaster, an embarrassment. Because everybody really, really enjoys pointing at broken buggy launches and making fun of them. But I think a lot of people will still enjoy the crap out of out of Starfield. Um, but I think it will be releasing very buggy, very glitchy, super stuttery, all sorts of weird stuff going on. But it will 
still uh, be very fun for a lot of people. So, like, I expect to really enjoy it, but I do expect to have a, a big old section in the review and critique discussing how buggy and, and busted it is. That's pretty. That's kind of cool. Hmm. I'm ready. So basically, Jedi Survivors, yeah, I think people who are actually playing it will enjoy it. But anybody who's not playing it will look from the outside in and be like, this is unacceptable. But it's just because, I mean, kind of like Hogwarts Legacy, people who are like big Xbox right now, I mean, we've had a couple in chat are coming in and are going like, Luke, how on earth could you be like railing against this when you were okay with Hogwarts Legacy? Um, the difference I would say is that Hogwarts Legacy, you could at least hit play and it would play. Um, it wasn't just downright broken on most hardware. This game I'd say is playable right now. I mean, obviously we're playing it, but I mean, look at the frame time graph, look at the inconsistent performance. This is not where it should be. But I'd say this is playable. Um, bear in mind, this is on a very expensive high-end PC. On lower tier hardware, it's much worse. On the Series S, it's pretty bad. Um, and if you don't believe me, just go watch the video we posted yesterday about it. There's that. The other thing is when a game is really, really good, a lot of people can excuse technical problems. They just do. Like if people really love Fallout New Vegas because the the role playing, because the the writing, the companions, the questing, all of that is so good, they're going to be willing to forgive or at the very least look past a lot of those bugs and glitches. That's just how it is. Love it or hate it, people are willing to overlook it if the rest of the game is is good enough. And in the case of Redfall, it's just not good enough to have us excuse it and that's really all it comes down to like yeah if the gunplay were better if the ai was really good if the concept was more interesting we'd maybe be more inclined to just forgive it or again to to look past it but in this case i just don't think we are so It's just that simple. I'm glad some people are loving it. Is that a dildo? No, it's Scrimshaw. Scrimshaw! But... I get it. People are bummed. Like, and they're getting defensive because they feel lied to. They feel betrayed by xbox and so they get very defensive it's kind of like you know the the five stages of, of depression um <laughs> what is it it's like five stages of depression or is it seven stage? i don't know denial anger bargaining depression and then acceptance right now a lot of like the the crazy hardcore xbox fanboys are in denial and then they get angry some of them are starting to get angry now and lashing out then they're going to get into bargaining uh and then after that when they bargain and try to go like well maybe maybe starfield will be really really good maybe this this and this this probably doesn't happen until starfield comes out and is kind of buggy and then they'll probably go straight into depression and then they'll just accept, okay, Xbox is maybe getting there, but it might take another three, four years for them to get where they need to be. Because if it is true that Starfield, um, Anti grave logs are scattered around. Interesting. Anti huh. sorry. Um, if it is true that Xbox producers and executives saw Redfall back in the day, back in 2020, 2021, and were like, this game is just not going to do well. This isn't going to be good. People aren't going to like it. It's going to do poorly. If that's what they said, 
And they just said, I don't know, just get it out. We just need more games on the roster. So just work on it and get it out. But we're not giving you tons of delays. We're not giving you big budgets. You're just going to finish this and then move on to something that we think is going to do better. That's one attitude, but that's an attitude that basically burns three, four years of dev time, which it did. Um, like Jeff said in that podcast, he thinks they should have just canceled it. And I think that's a case by case basis. Um, I don't know. Do you guys think that they should have canceled this? Do you think that this is something that they should have just been like, eh, it's not going to be received well. It's too weird and it's just not a great idea to begin with. Just cancel it. Should they have canceled it or should they have just done what they've done here? Get the game out the door. It'll appeal to some people. Some people will really like it, which is awesome. But a lot of people will not like it. And then they just like try to patch it and move on. All right. I don't have to stab them in the heart. Wow, dude. What is the shadow quality on the railings? I was looking at that too. It looks like it's like a screen space. Ambient occlusion or something. Like, I'm not even really sure, but you can always tell because if you look in the distance here, I'll show you again. It's so like, look on the railings. So under the railings, you're going to see shadows pop in and out. See right there. See that? That shadow moving. If anybody in chat knows what that is, let me know. I don't know what that's called, but it, I mean, if it's being occluded and then, whoops, and then the shadow goes away, it's got to be some sort of screen space, something or other. But it is a little distracting. Not a big deal, though. I mean... Yeah, you must be sweating. <laughs> I'm just built different, guys. The other thing that is, like, really a huge bummer about this is... It's the fact that Arcane has been known for a decade plus for having phenomenal level design. Like that's what made Dishonored so great was the level design almost exclusively. Like the level design and the movement capabilities made those games. And in like Deathloop, there was a little bit of it, but you ran through the levels so many times with the time loop mechanic that... Like, there wasn't really any replay. The replay happened in your first playthrough because you went through the levels so many times individually. Um, whereas this, there just isn't any careful level design. It's just super generic, open world, whatever. I thought vampires aren't able to go out in the sunlight. Is this a bug or a feature? What? Or is it because there's there's a an eclipse that they're able to be out in the sun? Like it might create. There's still sunlight. It's just that there's an eclipse, but they're, they're, like there's still sunlight. Am I crazy? I don't think that's supposed to. Okay, I don't, I don't know. That one guy. Ninety nine cents. Thank you. Hey Luke. I have a dilemma and was curious on what your opinion would be. Should I spend my last $70 on food for my starving child or should I spend it on this high quality game? Thanks, buddy. That's all, oh, man. That's a good question. That's a good question. Um, <laughs> I mean, I think it's really important to have a really high quality video game to play. Uh, food grows on trees. Video games don't. So just go find a tree to get your food and play a video game with your money, okay? <laughs> oh, man. 
Look at that. I can't stand that. Okay, hold on. Windows Plus. We're zooming in, folks. Look at that. Like, this is that weird hashing that DLSS Performance does if it renders too low. Like, the cars are fine, the road's fine, the roof's fine, the siding's fine, but shadows it really struggles with. Enhance. Enhance. And again, like, for you guys, it might not look that bad. We're streaming in 4K60, so you can see it in high resolution if you want. But um, when I'm playing this on a 45-inch monitor, which I am right now, like, that's rough. Ultra oh, that was not even ultra performance. Did it save it? Okay, upscaling to save Yes, I'm sure. But even then, I just... Hold on. D did it actually stay turned off? Because it's still there. Disabled. Yeah, it's disabled. Okay, so that wasn't even DLSS. DLSS was upscaling it accurately. The shadows just look like ass. Like, that's what it actually is rendering, like, natively. It looks better with DLSS. Am I crazy? I think it looked like the cars looked better and more detailed with DLSS turned on. What on earth? This is like frying my brain right now. Overall quality, epic. DLSS quality frame generation on yeah dude that it, it looks the same if not like a little sharper around the cars i don't understand it dude this whole thing is weird None of this game makes any sense. The art style is also crap. I, well, like, the art style going back to Dishonored was very unique. You could tell it was an arcane game just by the look of it. And I, I can appreciate that, certainly. However, I, I do think at this point, if you're going to do like a, a strong art style like this in 4k, you have to strike a balance where like texture quality has to look intentionally. I don't even know what you'd call it. Painterly maybe. Cause the, the art style that they use is sort of this, like it's, it's a really interesting like watercolor style. I don't know how you describe it. I guess if somebody has experience with, with it or has read up on, what they describe it as bro look at the tire come on dude that tire is supposed to be circular look at that tire like why is that tire having problems but this one isn't what it's just so inconsistent see this guy's inside which makes sense because it's daytime i don't I, okay, I remember hearing, I think it was ACG's review, maybe, where he said that they got through, like, almost all of the game before realizing that something they thought was a, a, a feature was actually a bug. And I wonder if this is what he was referring to. Was he referring to the game having, like, vampires out in the day? Thinking that was a feature, but it's actually a bug. Wait, what? Oh my God. Okay. I thought it actually paused it, but I guess because it's a multiplayer game, it doesn't actually pause it. Okay. I'm going to go here and swap this out for this. And then this out for this 
The AI has no path tracing, by the way. I, I am unstoppable. Okay, you're unstoppable because you're fighting Whatever a bunch you of are, like. You've made a mistake. Bad, bad mistake. What? What is this? Do better than that. Oh, she can't die. There we go. Fun flare gun. What are you doing? <laughs> Next generation. Next generation gaming! Dab dab! Oh man. Again, it just makes it so hard. Like this, it's just so depressing because I want to be able to, to hype it up and be like, oh yeah, look out PlayStation, another player in town. But this makes it kind of difficult. A little bit difficult. Um, I feel bad for anyone who spent 70 bucks on this. Like what Maddie said in his review reminds me of Fallout 76 when it launched. Um, yeah, I mean, I would say in my experience, uh, playing this on PC, I haven't had Fallout 76 level issues. Fallout 76 was like straight up unplayable. As I've said, this is playable on a super expensive computer. But you would hope it would be like, goddamn. Um, however, on mid tier hardware, I would not be surprised at all if this is just like a broken pile of garbage. Historical marker. Redfall sure loves those. Great sniper, very aware. Ow. Am I not supposed to be over here? I needed that. Does that damage multiplier hits hard? God, I hate Layla. I still have had, have found like very little reason to actually use her ability. Which w bear in mind, like when you're playing a game and one of the defining features is that there are different characters with different abilities and you don't find yourself needing to use or even wanting to use the abilities hardly ever. You have to wonder, okay, well then why are they there? Like, why did you spend all this time trying to introduce these systems if nobody gives a crap? Bro. <laughs> you just kind of like slightly 
fist him in the butt and then he's down. Down for the count. Oh, and he's still making sounds. Is that him or is there another guy right here? Oh, maybe it was this guy. I was like, if the dead body or the incapacitated body is sighing, I don't know what to do. Oh man. I I think right now the biggest challenge, wow is right. I think the biggest challenge for this game is that there's just no challenge. Like the challenge is no challenge. Um because like saying that this would be fun to play with friends, it might be, but there needs to be a hell of a lot more difficulty introduced when you do that. Cuz if it's this brain dead, like why would I need somebody to go through it with? Like, are you kidding me? What are we doing? Fist him in the butt. Yeah, you heard me. You heard me. I know what's up. I get around. <laughs> this was made for Gen Z. I don't, I mean, man, honestly, I think Gen Z expects more than this. Like, if anything, Gen Z, I think, is more demanding than... Even a lot of older gamers. Stake launcher. Oh. Where's the stake? Oh, it's a special separate thing. Okay. Oh, no, there it is. Interesting. Um, like, I think Gen Z is used to, like, the Fortnite style games or Apex and, and that kind of thing which are constantly updated. Gunplay is super tight usually. And say what you will about Fortnite. Cause, I mean, again, I've been playing it recently, so it's at the top of my mind. Um, Epic is very good at quick updates to fix things. Like I ran into one bug, or not even a bug, just like an annoyance where there was like an upgrade. You upgrade your character through the match and you hit seven. So you hit seven and then you select which upgrade you want. But if you had two upgrades, because you got in a firefight, got distracted, whatever, you could hit that. But then it would, um, like, close the menu down, and you'd have to hit seven again to bring up the menu again. It's like, okay, that's kind of annoying. Uh, and within, like, two days, they had issued a patch that fixed it. So then when you hit seven, if you had two upgrades available, it would just keep the menu open. Something super small, granted... Probably doesn't matter to most people. Super small, but it, it does make a difference. Um, Dead catch records. Oh. It's the lady from the trailer. She definitely has more, more HP. Ooh. Nice. See, that was good. There's a little pushback, a little challenge. I like that. That was good. Um, now that we've done a little exploring though, I want to try a story mission. I thought the bear was an enemy. Oh no. They're clipped inside the box. I bet you can. Okay, I'm done. <laughs> I'm done. Okay, I'll stop being a prick. Okay, let's go and do... 
Actually, I should probably loot this and then go do a story mission, right? No. That's kind of cool. I'll give him that. There's like fish in there. That's that's fun. Um. Okay. Town used to be dead after dark. Level two. Ammo. Okay. Map. Let's see. Uh, island crash site. I think we're supposed to go there. Search helicopter crash for survivors. In theater, essence, two crowns. Safe house. Power on to unlock the fast travel point. Okay. Um, I think this is where we, we want to go. So I'm going to fast travel over here and we'll go to the helicopter. I would honestly alt F4 after that. I, I mean, again, everybody's tolerance for bugs is different. And that's one of the great things about um, <laughs> gamers, honestly, is that something can launch just clunky. Like New Vegas is a phenomenal example so often for this because New Vegas is a great game. But it's a broken pile of garbage, technically speaking, okay? We love the game. I love the game. But it's freaking broken. Even now, if you try to play on PC, depending on what hardware you're running, you just can't. You have to download mods. You have to download fixes from the community. It's great that the community is doing that. But the point is, it's broken by default. Like, even if you want to fix it, you won't be able to. Um... I'm also noting the ammo counter in the bottom right isn't sinking properly, so it'll show zero ammo left for the shotgun like it just did, but then you can still reload it. It's a little strange. Anyway, um, however, even with like minimal fixes, some people can play New Vegas just fine. Like on the 360, I remember playing New Vegas and I was like, yeah, it's super broken and buggy, but I'm having a good time. So honestly, if you're one of those players that can, can play a game um, that's super buggy and, and unoptimized and still have a good time, revel in that, savor that. Because there's a lot of people who wish they could. Like, I think I could play a lot more, uh, oh my god. I think I would play a lot more games if I had a higher tolerance for it, frankly. And I kind of wish I did. Yeah, PUBG. PUBG is another great example. A, a lot of people love PUBG, but for me, it's so clunky. Even now, it's certainly better now. But back in the day when it was huge, taking on like Fortnite, I couldn't get into it just because it was it was pretty buggy and broken. So one of the things with this game, it doesn't actually have like cutscenes. It has. Oh shit! What's it called? Um, it's, it's like silhouettes or marquees or some—I forget the term for it—but it's like an actual thing where it's just like little vignettes, vignettes, little vignettes that pop up of freeze frames of scenes. It's really weird. Okay, let's watch this. So we have a few missions available: grave situation, father's watch to be placed his mother's grave site, so the two of them can be together. Giving you tomorrow. Get to the avium or avum clinic and find bellwether team even hired bellwether to clean up, clean up the evidence of their work on redfall and secure company assets and vips there's something on those film reels avum doesn't want the rest of the world to see maybe you can get to the film before bellwether destroys the evidence at the very least they might have a way off the island or a voice in the dark someone is broadcasting emergency rescue plans over the radio telling people they'll get food shelter and way off the island at samuelson's shipyard the signal is coming from Dead Catch Records. Oh, I was just there. A local record store and radio station. You and your alloys, allies suspect the broadcast is fake, made by vampire cultists working for the Hollow Man to lure desperate civilians into a trap. Shut down the broadcast at Dead Catch Records, then go to Samuelson Shipping Yard for any civilians. Okay. Let's do this one, because we were just there. Cults. Okay, you see what I mean? We have cults now. I mean, I knew there were people acting strange all over town, but now they're sacrificing their neighbors to those monsters. Dead ass. As if that oh would Oh my safe. god! And now they're dressing up and saying they worship the Hollow Man? This is getting so weird. Well, weirder. <sighs> Aren't the monsters enough? Oh god, this is worse somehow. It's just murder. They're murdering their friends neighbors their families that cult is broadcasting a trap from the radio station in town 
sending people to the shipyard. It needs to be shut down. Unironically, unironically using the term dead ass. I, I can't, dude. I can't. I, <laughs> unironically using the term dead ass. I'm, I'm amazed. Wow. Again, like people have asked, like who writes this dialogue thinking that that's cool thinking that that's fun because for us we joke around that like dead ass is what like a cringe person like aiden ross is gonna say like yeah oh dead ass bro whatever dead ass finna bussin right we joke about it because nobody really talks that way because it's stupid but she actually just said that without like it being comedic she said it dead ass dead ass bro i i can't even i can't even but this is the thing like who designs and who writes these characters this way i think people that are writing these games actually do talk like that they just got out of like lit college drama three plus master's degree anonymous and now they're getting a job in game development and these like 60 year old dudes are hiring them because they think that they're going to have like a hip, cool kid writing their game for them. And instead they just get basically a Netflix special, which is dead ass, dead ass on arrival because it's awful. The radio station, that's where the broadcast is coming from. Just heard a cough. Let's see that AI. Oh, he did see me. I'll give you credit. I realize I have a gigantic flashlight shining. Oh. Where'd he go? Oh no, he clipped inside. <laughs> oh, that's tremendous. Just Cowboy, welcome. Thank you. Dead ass. That was amazing. They all huddle up around the gas tank. <laughs> Quick, guys, get in cover. This big red barrel will be fine. Oh my God. The elevator lift is kind of fun. I like that ability. It's finna bussin. It's finna bussin for real, real talk. Oh, this is where that vampire died. That's awesome. Damn, you smoked him dead ass. Dead ass, bro. I need the studio key. Again, still. Okay, so they are broadcasting. They're in the bathroom? I see ya. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Dead ass on God right there.
Wow, dude. It's pretty bad. On God, that's pretty bad. Dude, are they wiping with paper towels? No, they have toilet paper. No, that's a, that's paper towels, dude. You're going to clog. No. Okay. It's toilet paper. I was like, you're going to, you're going to clog something fierce. If you use that. I picked this thing up, but the light source is still there. So it still shines like it's there. There was a little like ghostly grave, whatever. I forget what they're called. But it was sitting there. I picked it up when we were here last time, but the light didn't despawn when the item was picked up. So the light emitted by the item is still there. No cap, dead ass, finna bussin on God. It's just such a bummer that there is so little, so little, um, creativity in the level design. Like it's really heartbreaking when you've seen what the, like this company is capable of, and then you see just how <laughs> lame this is in comparison. It's just really depressing. gonna keep going oh man I'm jealous of Luke's wife dead ass on God I'm pretty sure that the Epic Game Store will give this free in about a year with this game is dead. Uh, yeah, I mean, the thing is, I honestly don't... Like, this is the weird thing about Game Pass, okay? It gives and it takes. Because on the one hand, it's nice that we can get this. Tulip Trap, by the way, thank you so much. Um, it's... it's it gives because... We don't have to pay 70 bucks to try the game, right? That's nice. Whereas like five years ago, we would, or 10 years ago, whatever. Um, so if it sucks, we just wasted the time to download and try it, right? It's not that big of a deal. But the other thing with it is think about it from Microsoft's perspective. If this game is amazing, what does that sound? They might get some new signups to Game Pass. Maybe. Probably not many, but they'll probably get some. But if the game sucks ass, I don't think they're losing many subs. Because, like, people are upset now, sure, but they signed up for the month. Or a lot of people, I'd say maybe even the majority, are on, like, three, six, 12-month plans. And so, for them, like... They release it buggy, broken, garbage. And people are upset, sure. But it, does it actually hurt their bottom line for the game to launch broken? I don't... I'm not convinced it really does. Like, the bad press right now, the bad uh, media with it, and the fact that, honestly, the gamers are so up. pissed about this I and so annoyed that they've been waiting so long for a good game and then they get this. I, I get that. 
that frustration is palpable and is real, but I don't know if that actually affects their bottom line in a significant way. Um, and so like, I, I think that that could vouch for what the rumor currently is, which is that Microsoft knew that this wasn't going to be received. Well, they didn't like the idea, but they said, just get it out there so we can claim we have another exclusive. And they were probably hoping that it would launch okay and it would get like seven out of tens or maybe a couple eight out of tens but probably average around seven and they could just move on um and i don't think they were expecting it to be received this poorly and to be this buggy and broken but i mean what are you gonna do at this point and i think that they were just like eh, just get it out just get it out it doesn't really hurt the bottom line it doesn't really hurt our our revenue numbers it just is what it is peak player count was 6100 on steam now it's 2500 bro ow that's new oh There we go, my goodness. It's just line of sight. Do I just have to get around corners? On God, come here. We're close. That was a little better. That was better. Required like a little bit of movement. I'll take that. Do I have... No. I'm hoping for a gold rifle at some point. That's all I really want. over now um i like or like xbox originals we haven't had good xbox and pc only for ages it feels yeah i mean again like the closest thing you can say is hi-fi rush but hi-fi rush i still insist is very niche like the people who have played it and like it i like i liked it i enjoyed it but I don't think that that does what Xbox needs it to do, which is to be like the game for a week or two. Ow. Oh, there's a sniper. I needed that. Deacon Valley, welcome, thank you. Ooh. We're not playing this super tactically, as you can tell. Are they just like slowly walking towards me? Oh, another vampire. You over here? 
Yeah, I should move down here. <laughs> okay. You know, coming up the stairs, you're supposed to have the high ground. I definitely picked up pistol ammo. Why am I not? Why do I not have any? Okay, well. Because I saw it, I picked it up, and then it went, I was like, okay, I should reload. And then I didn't, because I was like, eh, it'll be fine. I'll get through this first. Maybe it's like a specialty handgun or pistol ammo? I don't know. There ain't nothing could kill me. Okay, we did that. Shit. This might be bad. I don't have any healing. And I think the boss fight's about to start. I thought you streamed on Twitch, got confused. Oh yeah, AJ, we tried it for a little bit, but we settled on YouTube for a handful of reasons. I like the, um, I like the chat on Twitch more, but I also really like the replay options on YouTube with DVR support. And as you can see, we're streaming in 4K60 right now, which you can't use on uh, on Twitch. And yes, Eric, we're using the AV1 thing that YouTube just introduced. So we are streaming right now at 4K60 with 12 megabit per second. Um, on YouTube, normally that would be like for a really good 1080 stream. Auntie wouldn't let him see me at first. So... It's uh it's pretty fire if we're being real. I wanted folk to be well. I also I do like the YouTube community a lot. And I mean, frankly, at the end of the day, this only works um because of you guys. So if you guys prefer YouTube, like who am I to be like, yeah, get over to Twitch. You know, like Can you imagine? UV beam. Like if you guys just really like Twitch, I, I'd be more likely to move to Twitch, right? Like, I think that makes sense. Especially because usually there's reasons you guys prefer one over the other. You know, it's not like you're just making it up haphazardly. I kind of wish they had color coded the weapons in this weapon wheel. I think that would have been helpful. Um, I prefer YouTube live for sure. Like you on YouTube, dude, feels right. Well, and it's just, it kind of lines up because a lot of people for the longer videos already have YouTube premium. Um, the other thing that's like honestly so difficult with Twitch is just that every, for one, their systems are outdated. The fact that like 4K streaming is not a thing on Twitch is laughable um, in 2023. It's ridiculous. YouTube just introduced RTMP plus with 4K, 60 support and it's night and day I don't know why he's glowing but okay Um, Epos Vox used it. Yeah, I looked up his guides for setting this up. I do love me some Epos Vox. It's just, I mean, again, the, the perception is, at least from my point of view, um, 
that Twitch is actively getting worse and YouTube is actively getting better. Um, I, I remember saying a few weeks ago or a month ago or something, I was like, it feels like YouTube's just given up to focus on shorts. But then I, I thought about it from a different perspective. And I was like, well, just getting like the 4K60 thing up and running is a pretty insane improvement by itself. That's not a, a small feat. Getting 4K60 streaming global is a crazy feature. Like that is madness when you really think about what has to go into it. So they haven't just been sitting on their ass. They've been working on it. Not everybody's going to benefit from it because right now you basically need like a, a pretty crazy streaming setup to be able to benefit from it. But I mean, for us being able to do 4K60 right now, that's wild. Um, we're testing performance of this game on PC. Yeah, and we're just playing through some of it to see what it's like. Because the reviews obviously are not great. But we want to see if people are just kind of like exaggerating or if people are being honest and real with it. No, just, just playing it by ear. Um, Twitch stream quality and bitrate is busted. Well, they're so obsessed, I think, Amazon is, with maintaining a certain like profitability standard that they need to get margins up. And so the idea of them using AWS to crank 4K60 globally for all streamers is just not doable. Even if they made it just a Twitch partner thing, I think that they still would not want to do it because they just are like, eh, we're not making enough money as is. So why would we greatly increase the bandwidth? Meanwhile, Google and YouTube, they're just like, yeah, we'll just do it. Whatever. Because it's the same infrastructure they use for YouTube. So like right now, you guys, I'm streaming this in AV1, but then it gets transcoded to VP9 and sent to you unless you have specifically enabled AV1 video in your YouTube settings. If you go up to like the gear icon or the three lines and then the settings options, you can force it to play AV1. We're just forced uh, AV1. Thanks for the tip. Yeah, no, it's it'll work now with YouTube videos and then the streams as well. And it's just AV1 is so much better than any of these other... I was already there. Oh, whatever. Um. Yeah, it's just so much better than anything any of these competitors are using. Can't wait for the internet historian uh, bit on this game. Yeah, I mean, it's just... I can't... I, nobody likes this. Nobody's happy about this. Oh, here's the restock. Um... Nobody's happy about this. Like, this sucks. Everybody, like, we would like to be able to talk really positively. We'd like to to hype it up and discuss it. But frankly, it's just the case that this isn't where it needs to be. And frankly, like, what happened with Deathloop? People like Maddie. I was actually really pleased with Maddie in his review. Because I feel like he tore into a lot of this in a, in a pretty fair way. Where he said, like, look what happens when we excuse things like bad AI or glitches or this or that. It's like then the studio thinks that they can get away with it and they push the boundary even further. And that's what happened with, with Deathloop. The AI was terrible. And then they pushed the boundary more and more and more and more. And now we have a, a game with pretty bad AI with uh, a pretty lackluster concept behind it. And weird co-op multiplayer that we all just kind of excuse because whatever and we, it shouldn't be like that like we shouldn't tolerate it i believed in arcane till the end i was wrong well dante it just goes to show you like nobody is immune from mistakes and hopefully they're gonna look at this and and move forward and try to reevaluate. the danger is sometimes when there's like some sycophantic apologists that are like the game's actually really good everybody else is just hating on it for the sake of hating on it or it's like a a psyop from playstation it's like uh, or maybe the game is just bad like maybe maybe that's what it is you got one straggler hair going crazy maybe that's what it is it's just not what it should be I, I think it's just important for us to be consistent and honest and direct about this stuff um otherwise you're not helping anything you really aren't <laughs>
He took my thing. Red, red flag.